Uh, turn it on. Maybe I'll do the fancy stuff about about there, so that'll all be knurled. Okay, I have a different cutter on there now. Let's have a look at see how this guy goes. Sixteen. That's about where I think we'd be. All right, now I just got to cut this uh, portion for the thread of the end cap. Time again to change the cutter. I'll put a tape on that. I'll kick the tool post over it say five degrees and um, we'll start again. That's about ten degrees there. Let's go back to five. See how it's a little bit, uh, not so smooth, a little bit gnarly in here. And this, this cutter here, I mean, I think that profile there is for sort of for steel. I, I can't tell you what rake it is at the moment, but uh, I think that's for steel. I think for aluminium, you might need a little bit more of a, a little bit more of a back rake. Junk, junk. Okay, just change the angle of approach. Give it a squirt, it's a schlager. Better. I'm going to change the angle of the cut to about two and a half degrees. Very rough, but it's a shape coming on. The radius on that sucker. This is a knurler. These little teeth, they run around the job and they bite in and uh, they create that cross-hatched look. I want to knurl this part here in the same same operation. Um, it's going to make me come right up very close uh, to the to the chuck, and uh, I think I can risk it. I just have to be on the ball, guys. So the camera's right there. I have to move it out of the best spot. I've got to be watching this. 
Where? Again. So it's come time now to part right there. So I've got the uh, the live center at the end here. Now there's a rule that says you shouldn't use the live center, but I'm gonna um, be very steady and uh, take it to the point of breakage and then remove the live center. Damn it. bad. That'll do. Got 13 millimeters there. I'm going to take that up to 14 millimeters. I just touched off on the side of the piece. It's got zero, zero out there. Cut in a little bit of relief inside uh, where the thread's going to finish, so I'm just going to use this. So normally I'd run this tap through it, um, but I've had a uh, few viewers sort of saying you've got a lathe, you should be using the thread cutting tools. Well, I'll do that on this occasion because I should be honing my skills with that, but uh, just I'll demonstrate that the gears are an absolute pain in the butt to change. Well, this is like a much quicker way of just putting this in the tail stock and cutting a thread and you're done in a couple of moments. Here's my gear chart. So I want a um, metric thread and two millimeters. So M16 with a uh, thread pitch of two millimeters. And these are the gears that I need. Oh, what a pain in the bottom. going to thread that fast. I'll spare you but I've got to change the speed by changing the pulley. Another reason why I use taps. 
much more civilized. I'm going to control this by using the on-off switch. Start my thread there, keep that engaged. I'm going to cut this thread using the die through here just because it's just far easier. Uh, we've got to this stage here now, but what I was thinking of, it's not ready. I wanted to mill a, uh, a series of flats on here, say three, 120 degrees apart. Now, I think I'll use the milling machine. I was going to just fire it on here, but I've got the milling machine and I need the practice. So let me set that up and finish this baby off. This is not precision alignment, remember. This is just thereabouts. Well, I think that's about it. There's a couple of things I probably could have done. 
maybe uh, continue the machining up about another eight millimeters up the uh, up the side there. But uh, I really don't want to put it back in the milling machine. I won't. It's very hard to uh, to set that back up exactly the way it was, and I'll, I would just probably stuff it, make it worse. It is what it is. And these things you learn better next time is to mark mark a spot either side, how far you want to go. And um, I was probably just more nervous. I was very very nervous in cutting that <laughs> uh, because it wasn't, you know, it's soft aluminium. It can move. I wasn't trying to apply a deep cut or anything like that. I was just afraid it would move and then render it all stuff. But Look, overall, I'm, I'm quite happy with the screwdriver. It's a, um, just a, like I said, a practice piece. It's a good little fun thing. You can put this in your toolbox. It will serve you well for many years, and it's something that can be handed down, and uh, perhaps your grandkid will say, did you make that granddad? <laughs> sort of deal. Let's put these guys in there. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to thank everybody for watching. Thank you for your patience, and, uh, and I'll see you on the next one.